Hey everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday evening. I'm hoping I'm live. I am a little bit late, so sorry. Um, a couple of you have been waiting patiently for me to log on. Um, time ran away with me, let's say, and uh, I wasn't particularly prepared. But yep. Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Heather. I am a songbird stamper, an independent stamping up demonstrator from Fair in the United Kingdom, right on the south coast, uh, where the weather today has been awful and yesterday as well it's done nothing but rain um so um and we're getting into the winter now so my lighting hopefully is okay for you to see what i'm doing but i, I feel a bit bright where i look at myself on oh, my screen is over there so um, i'm just trying to look at the camera at the moment um so yeah welcome welcome if you're new to my channel thank you for joining us if you're live Hello and welcome, and I will say hello to you all once I can see your comments as I put my screen down. And uh, yeah, if you're watching us on the catch up, thank you very much indeed. So I'm going to do a little bit of live crafting. I don't know about anyone else, but I have really struggled with my crafting mojo, probably for the last 10 days. And I'm wondering whether it's because we're in that in-between period between kind of summer and Christmas. And I don't really do Halloween crafting. So I'm kind of left in a limbo a little bit. And autumn in the UK, I don't know, it just seems so fleeting that I don't really buy autumn stamp sets. Maybe I should, um, because I struggle at this time of year. So I've gone wild florals again for today. So we've got a fancy fold card for you. Um, I don't normally make fancy fold cards. I have had a request for a masculine themed card. So I'm going to try and do that at some point. But today we've got we've got florals, we've got flowers because they make me happy. And I hope they make you too, you happy too. Um, there's a lot going on with stamping up at the moment, um, but I'll try and talk through some of that as we go on. I'm just going to get down because otherwise I could sit here all night waffling to myself. Um, but I'll spin you around and we'll get to some crafting, shall we? Oh, blind you, blind you with the bright lights. Good evening, Louise. Hey, Shaz, thank you for the thumbs up. Yes, Hazel, I saw your comments, bless you, as I was getting ready. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't realise the time. Let's just put it that way. Uh, hey, Joanna. Oh, cinema. What did you go and see? Oh, I'm intrigued. I'd love to go to the cinema. Okay, I just need to find the stamp set now. Um, oh, I had it out. We're going to work with <laughs> we're going to work with the irresistible blooms stamp set. If I can find it. I've had Christmas out on my desk. I've just been making a lovely Christmas card, which I'll show you just while I try and figure out where the stamp set is for tonight. Um, I demonstrated this card fold at my class today. Um, so I'm going to put somewhere to write here. Um, but yeah, my sentiment is, is really not straight. <laughs> um, but it's a barn door card. Yeah, I thought they were quite pretty. I don't think anything's straight on there, actually, is it? That's not stuck on straight. The sentiment's not straight. Hello, Shaz. Your daughter-in-law got her cast on. Oh, caught the thief, but no sign of the car. That's awful. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's been. Um, we we have yeah we have some quite bad areas around here, sadly. Right, I found the stamp set. Whew. Oh, that's a real pain. Hopefully, she can claim on the insurance, but it's just a real nause, isn't it, when that happens? Um, I've brought out this stamp set. I just kind of really struggled to figure out what we were going to make today. Um, and then all of a sudden, I was like, look, let's just grab some purple. Okay, so Joanna's going to be happy. Let's grab some purple and grab some flowers. But before I do that, I just want to say I've been really spoiled recently. It's my birthday coming up. And um, I want to show you a couple of things that have been people have made for me because I think it's really important to share. Yes, yay for the purple. Um, and I, I've been at a class today and I got spoilt rotten. So um, this is a, a lovely, lovely one of three beautiful gift boxes that was made to be made for me um, by my team. Um, and they brought me to put the names of all the team in here. Look, so love this. Oh, if I can get the lid off. Is it, is it stuck? Oh, that's it. I'm just holding on to it. And they bought me some charms for my bracelet, which I'm over the moon about. I love them. Love, love, love. So I was kindly given this one here, which is really cute. It says, um, always follow your dreams, I think. I need a magnifying glass. They're so small, aren't they? It is, Shaz. It is a big birthday. 
And this one here has got a little camera and the um, um, globe for all my travels. And then this one here is the bird and it says time to fly because I'm a songbird stamper. And then this one was given to me when I got this bracelet by my upline. And this one here was given to me by my upline. And there's a lovely Emma Goddard as well for achieving the Mexico trip, which I must add a disclaimer, only 1% of demonstrators do. Uh, <laughs> you have to say that every time, apparently. So I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but yes, beautiful, beautiful. And the box is just glorious. I love it. Love, love, love. There's three of those. I've got a beautiful birthday card. I won't share the birthday cards today. I will take pictures of those. It's not yet. But I just thought these were really special um, and some lovely handmade gifts. This was made to me by um, the lovely Gina today. Those in my Facebook group, if you don't know, I have a VIP Facebook group. So come over and join us. It's called The Songbird's Nest. And the other day we were talking about red sunflowers. And so look what she bought me. Some red sunflower seeds. And I'm going to use this. And it's a little seed packet. And I'm going to put my seed packets, I'm going to get some seeds and put them in here. Isn't that clever? The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, space for eight of them. With that gorgeous design of series paper. Isn't it wonderful? Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. And the box is stunning. So I'm super grateful. Very, very touched. I had a four layer birthday cake today. Which I've never had a four layer birthday cake and a helium balloon as well, which I've never had a helium balloon before. And then they bought me this um, spellbinders magnet today. I've had other gifts from my team as well, but I just this is going to sit on my desk. It's a magnet for holding my dies. So if you see that around and about the bazaars, basically the two dies that I'm going to use today can sit on there and I'm not going to lose them. Love it. And it just sits onto the side. Ah, you are meant to put seeds in the ground. <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh, Joanna, that's such a shame, isn't it? It's, oh, yes. I Everything that happened during lockdown. Oh, I shouldn't be showing you the card. That was a sneak peek of the card. Um, bless you. 40th birthday of the year during lockdown. Fireworks night. Yes, you all know my birthday. You do all know my birthday. I don't mind putting it out there. Okay, so let's get let's get creating, shall we? So I've got a fun fold card for you. I am gonna I'm just gonna show it to you. Um you've got this. It's I'm calling it a box card. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. I mean it doesn't stand up, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't stand up very well. It does on like the desk, but it's a bit top heavy. These are my own measurements. I just saw something online and I was like, oh, I'm going to make that. So I've done my own measurements and I will give you, this is to make like a seven by five card. So I haven't written them down, so we're just winging it really. Um, it's going to be five inches. So if you cut a piece of A4 card stock to five inches, I should have written the measurements down rather than just guessing it. Granddaughter will be one on the fourth. Your dad's birthday is the fifth. Wow. And mum's birthday is the sixth. That is highly unusual, isn't it? So we're going to, we're going to score this at seven inches, eight inches, nine inches. So seven, eight, nine, and ten inches. And then we're going to chop it down at ten and a half. And I'm going to hope that works. Like I say, I haven't. Yes. So five by ten and a half scored at seven, eight, nine and ten. Hey, Mary, how are you doing? All right. You haven't missed an awful lot. I was late on and then I was just sharing a few things. Um, so we're, we're kind of late to the party. Then we're going to need a piece of cardstock. And I've gone for soft sea foam. Soft sea foam and uh, fresh freesia, this is. And they just go beautifully together. And we're going to cut this one. I'm looking for my ruler because I don't know. We're going to cut this one to seven inches by... Ten and a half centimetres. I know you hate me. You all hate me when I do this. Ten and a half centimetres by seven inches. 
you know, the trimmer's got two measurements on for a reason, right? Just use them, use them both. <laughs> That's what I say. And then we are going to score this at... Fourteen centimeters. This is this is even worse. Should really work this out one measurement or the other. I'm going to score it at fourteen centimeters, and then we need we need an inch on from here. So if you take the score line and line it up on the inch marker, which is this one all the way down here, this one, and then score again. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one, Joanna. I just just use them, use them both. Then you get an inch. So that's a really useful. That's a really useful thing to know. If you like, you just need an inch on. You just use the inch markers down there. And there's your there's your basis for the card. Okay. Then what you're going to need to have is a, another piece of paper that measures 14 centimeters. And there's a reason that it needs to be centimeters here. 14 centimeters by 10 and a half. Okay, then you need a piece of white cardstock measuring 14 centimetres by 10 and a half. So this should already be 10 and a half, and this is going to be 14. And the reason for this is because we're going to be using the gorgeous garden dies. I know, oh, Joanna, I'm exactly the same. Writing instructions for classes is hard when you just basically make the measurements up as you go. <laughs> yep. You speak my language. <laughs> like just, just kind of do that, and then that, and then it will be fine. And that you see fits neatly on there. Can't get that double box. Oh, I can't see the rest of your comments, Shaz, because I've got a big heart. I can give hearts to myself. Um, you can't get that double gift box out of your head. Oh, it's gorgeous. My beautiful um, downline Anne Marie made that for me. She made three of them as well. So a lot of work went into those. So that's going to cut out of here. So cut that out of the white. We can put the trimmer to one side. Oh, I don't think I've ever made a double explosion box. I've definitely made explosion boxes. I like making big ones and putting candles on the inside. So when you put a big die, my big top tip for tonight, when you put a big die like this through the, the cut and emboss machine, angle it and run it through so you're not running a flat line through the front, okay? Run it through at an angle because it's a lot gentler and kinder on your plates, on your rollers rather. Love the die, have used it a lot. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Lovely die set, this one. Oh, it's, it takes a bit of effort to mangle it through the machine and I'm just gonna come back through as well doesn't help that my plate is very bowed right now I'm waiting for it to crack and then this is just going to peel out beautifully it's, it cuts gorgeously absolutely delightful dye this one and then these pieces will just come out nicely so my my kind of again my other top for tip for this dye is just make sure you glue everywhere because these leaves, you don't want them popping up and sticking up. So when I turn it over in a second, we put some glue on here. Just make sure that you glue all the little leaves down. I'm just going to try and get all these bits of cardstock out. I could use my pokey tool, but just take all those little bits out of there. Okay, I've missed those one big ones. Look. Oh, you've inked the die. Oh, wow. Oh, I've never really done that. I bet that looks amazing, though. Hey, Jackie. Three birthdays on 6th of November. Oh, my goodness. When you need an inch, you turn your paper around and use the one-inch measure. Yes, you absolutely could do that as well. I think it was just because I didn't know this little measurement on the side, so I was going to struggle with that a little bit. Hello, Becky. No worries, no worries. We are making a fun fold card tonight using the Irresistible Blooms and some of my favourite colours. I was just saying earlier, I 
been struggling with my creative mojo a little bit recently. And um, I think it's because it's that in-between time. My head's not really in Christmas yet. Um, shock horror, I know, in the crafting world. Um, but neither is it hot and sunny out there anymore. And I don't really do autumn crafting. I think I need to start. I'm going to get back into my nature journaling, I think, as well. I've I've been building a nature journal, like a watercolour nature journal for all the months of the year. Um, I stopped last year in October, November time. So it's a good time for me to pick it up and do the remaining six months. It's like a concertina journal book and I would love for it to be finished. I've just noticed, I don't know, just a bit of extra on there. That's a bit of gold foil I had on my plate already. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to pick that up. And I might even start teaching a class in nature journaling as well. So drawing and painting. Um, I think that would be a really fun thing to do. I don't know. I, I'm just talking out, musing out loud. Um, but one of the local uh, places that I teach at, She's quite keen to do some nature journaling stuff. So whether I teach it or whether we just kind of get together as a group and do it. Colouring class. Shaz, yeah, I've done lots of colouring classes over the last kind of four, three, four years. I love doing them. Um, I just had said I'm not going to do any next year. I've done blends courses and I've done watercolour watercolouring courses. I mean, if there's enough demand for a watercolouring course, I, I'm could be persuaded to do another one of those um, but numbers were a little bit down on this last one and I just wondered whether I might have it might have run its course for a little bit um, and whether I give it a year's break but yeah I could be tempted to do another watercolouring course next year I do keep a sketchbook oh here we go Shaz will I be doing another watercolour zoom class next year potentially but I haven't got anything could you stick the data tickets yes you absolutely could Autumn leaves, but yeah, the autumn autumn colours are stunning, so I don't know why I don't do more autumn crafting. Yes, you could absolutely stick this down onto. Um, I just don't ever think of those sticky sheets um, for some reason. Oh, you see, this is the awkward bit, and you just want to lay this straight down onto that green piece that you cut earlier. Um, there's a couple of reasons I use green. A, because you don't see the edges so much, and B, because they're leaves. So what I mean by you don't see the edges, if you've just got a small amount of overlap, which I have here, it's not as prominent as if you used a darker colour. And the green behind just works for those leaves. So we can stick those down. I'm just going to pop a teeny bit of glue under that one because I've missed it. You know, a few people have asked and you've told them you will ask you, oh, well, bless you. But yeah, maybe I will then, Shaz. Uh, maybe I need to reach out to you. Send me a, send me a PM. Maybe we should talk. Because um, I know there's a, there's a couple of other people who missed out on this last one, um, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. I'm making no promises, but yeah, if the demand is there, I would definitely love to help more people um, become more confident because I think it's it's really lovely. I had a beautiful card made for me with all watercolor background, um, and it was made by one of my downline who said that she took my watercolour course this year and finally she has the confidence to to make those kind of cards, to give it a go, to get the paints out. She even mixed the colours, which is amazing, to make a colour that she didn't have. Um, and that's really lovely to hear. I'm just going to go in here with my snips and just trim off a little bit of that excess. Just a slither that was coming out the side. Oh, you'd do it again, would you, Joanna? Oh, bless you. You must have enjoyed it. Either, you, either you've enjoyed it or I was so, such a bad teacher, you didn't learn anything. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which is which. <laughs> so that's going to go on there like that. And then uh, this one is going to go like that. So we're going to stick some stuff on first. No, we won't. We'll stick it down. We'll stick it down. So I'm just going to fold and burnish all those score lines. I made myself chuckle too much. And then that's going to go down there. Come on, put under. Like that. 
So if we stick some glue onto this flap here, the idea being that when this card lays flat and is folded up, it's seven, seven inches by five inches. So we're going to want to stick that there and then fold that over there. Yeah, that's going to go over there. So you've got one score line visible. Oh, uh, yeah, do you know what? It makes such a difference doing them live. It really does. And I had somebody else on the last course as well say that. So, yeah, you're not alone. So maybe there is some demand for it again. Just need to find some time and figure out the dates because it would be good. It would be good to do. So that's there. And then we can decorate this panel. So it's just you're just creating a little box. And I mean, you could do this. I love making cards like this as well, where you've got like a little drawer goes in the side and you can make a little drawer to go in here. I and mean, you wouldn't then be able to fold the card and you could put little sweets in. And you make a little slidey drawer and you fill it with sweets and that sits inside. Or you put a pen in or anything you want. I would say lipstick, but I don't. I'm not really a lipstick person, um, but you could put sweets is definitely my, more my bag than lipstick. Um, so we're going to decorate this with some of the masterfully made designer series paper because it's gorgeous. Now, there is a right way and a wrong way for this paper. It's kind of got some text on it and it looks Latin. So we're going to cut it like that. But first of all, we just need a little bit more. It's too small. So let me get another sheet of the um, soft sea foam. Because this just gives a contrasting layer between the, the fresh freezer paper and the fresh freezer base. And I think that just looks really pretty. And we're going to cut this to... Three short lines shy of five. Can you see? I don't know if you, I'm hoping you can see that. So where you've got the five, I'm going to come back three short lines. They're the sixteenths of an inch. So I'm just going to come back three of those. And if, if we were working in metric, it would be like half a centimetre. I just think quarter of an inch is a bit too much. Okay. And now this is about six inches because we're going to come back three lines shy of six inches i haven't cut that cardstock the most economical way but there we go such is life that happens sometimes and that's going to be our mat and layer well that's going to be our layer and then this is going to be our mat so we're now going to cut this to five and five eighths making sure we've got the text coming up the right way. So five and five eighths long, and then that will fit into our mat like that. Five and five eighths by uh, four and five eighths. Five and five eighths by four and five eighths. And then that will fit on there like that. And then they can get glued onto there. I'm hoping you're still you're all following me with these measurements. But realistically, you could make this any size you wanted to, um, as long as it kind of fits. The, the most important thing is getting the front panel, which I'll show you in a minute, just so it doesn't stick over the edge if you want it to go in an envelope. And then you can just line that up and stick that down. And we're going to do some watercolouring tonight, interestingly enough. Because, you know, I do love a bit of watercolouring. And then this paper is going to go straight on the front. And then that's going to go down on there. See, who else has had absolutely torrential rain today? It has tipped it down. It's all right. We've had a bit of uh, a bit of sunshine today. Yesterday was terrible. 
And then this little panel on here, we are going to use, uh, again, just some soft sea foam. So that's the right height. And we want 3 16 shy of an inch. So I'm using the measurements on the right hand side this time. I'm going to measure it up one, two, three, three short lines back from an inch. I need to change my trimmer blade. Can you see how I'm getting all rough edges? I don't like rough edges at all. So let's just change that out. Long put one in actually. So maybe I just need to look at all that. Look at all that gunk. That's the other thing to do. Can you see all that build up? That's not even all of it. You see all that build up that you get in your trimmer? That's not going to help you get a clean cut and it's going to help dull your blade quicker. So do make sure you keep your track clear. Um, and then you could use an off cut of paper. Um, I actually have, but I'm being a bit finickety tonight. I do want the paper to be the right way up. So I'm going to cut this to five eighths of an inch. Really thin strip it is. Just a, oh, I haven't got a blade now, hang on. Oh, you're laughing at me, hang on. I just took it out and then realized I need it again. The reverse of the paper is rather autumnal. Yeah, all those gorgeous colours. All those gorgeous colours. So we're going to trim this at five eighths of an inch. Torrential rain yesterday, but it was dry and sunny. Oh, that's nice, Hazel. Dry and sunny, that's what we want. The reverse of the paper, yes, it is. Oh, we're of course using the flexi measurement. <laughs> the flexi measurement method. I like that. I like that a lot. And this one's going to be at four and five eighths of an inch, I think. Pretty sure it is. Interested in the flexi measurements. Do you know when I first started crafting, I just used to use a pencil and a ruler all the time. That was how I measured everything. And I would just line it up and go, I want to cut there and make a mark. Um, I didn't do any of this kind of measuring malarkey. Um, I wasn't really until I started teaching and I was like, well, I can't really tell people just do that. So I started having to think about measurements. But uh, yeah, I used to, and my cooking, my I said to Russ, my cooking is like my crafting. Just there's no there's no kind of just chuck it in. I don't know how much. I don't I don't weigh things, and it's probably why my cooking doesn't go very well. My ad hoc methods seem to work better with my crafting than they do with my cooking. He's like, "What are you doing now?" And I was like, "I don't know. Just I'm just I'm just putting some stuff together, and I'm hoping it will work." So that's going to go on there like that. The track fluff always remains old oh, man's belly button fluff. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, you've used the right emoji there, Becky. That is or to toe bogies. <laughs> now, if you want to switch off at this point, switch off <laughs> before the conversation goes downhill. Hmm. So that's gonna go on there like that. You I mean you hardly see this, it just is a hint. Okay, so that's that bit. And then when you close it, you see you've got five by seven and open and close, open and close. Now to stick this bit on. And the key to this is you don't want the edge to overlap like this. Can you see how the right, because this is gonna go in a five by seven envelope. So if I stick it too far to the right, you don't want that edge to overlap. Shaz, this is the masterfully made designer series paper. It's got some gorgeous patterns in it and I really like it. So what I'm going to suggest is that we stick this edge down first. So we're going to go down here like this with some glue. Don't really want it coming off the edge, so let's just tidy that up. And then we're going to line it up. So you've got this folded over. So you've got the fold and then the flap, which you've glued. Okay, and then hold that up against there. Make sure you've got it equidistance top and bottom. Don't worry about this end yet. Just line that base edge up. 
and stick that down. And do a bit of faffing if you need to faff with it first. Okay. And then you can flap it open and then just put some glue. You don't want much. It's not much of an overlap. Put some glue on that edge and then stick that. You can get away with a bit more, actually. A little bit more, but don't put too much on. I'm going to ask if cook... Yes, I do. I do cook the same. <laughs> Very ad hoc. Whereas Russ is very precise in everything he does. I am not. So that's going to go on there like that. And then when it opens out, you've got this lovely panel. So it's not kind of central. You have got more of a border down here. But I'm okay with that. I think that looks pretty. And again, it does, it does stand up um, just, just about. So now we can decorate the front. So I've got some fresh freezer cardstock. And I've got the deckled circle dies because they're beautiful. I just have to find them. Oh, there we go. That was easy. Don't you love it when it's easy? <laughs> and that the die set you find first is the one you need. Um, and I'm going to grab, which is this one. So let's label them. One, two, three, four, five. Is it the sixth one? Yeah. The sixth one and we're going to cut that from fresh freezer card stock and go through the cutting emboss machine it's just need a bit of a clean oh, i can do that later okay and that just helps when i mean you're hardly going to see this circle but it just helps everything rather than putting everything straight onto the um, this decorative background. I think it just helps it pop a little bit more. Oh, you've ordered the deco circles in your starter kit. Good choice. They're lovely. And do you know what I really like about these circles is that they're quite tightly layering. Some of the other dies that we've got, um, there's quite a big border. There's a bit of a bigger, I would say a bigger border in some of them. Um, but these are quite tightly layering, so they look quite nice when they're layered up together. Yeah, very good choice. They've been they've been quite popular actually. I've had a few people order those. Um, and obviously, if you want to order any of the products, the link is in the description below. You can absolutely do so, and I would be very grateful for every order. So that's going to go there like that, and that's going to go on there like that. Okay. And then we're going to put that on with dimensionals, but I'm going to decorate. I'm going to do the like the decoration first. So I've got some vellum and my lovely new magnet. So I'm going to cut some leaves from vellum and I'm going to see if I can get them out of these scrappy bits. Because you can often get these small leaves out of some of these little pieces. Yep, perfect. I'm going to cut three, three leaves out of vellum. Oops. I just love how vellum adds that real soft, subtle look of interest without detracting from your focal point. Yes, the deckled rectangles are super cool too. I love that. I can just put my dies right here and they nice and neat. Oh, Shaz, that's really kind of you. Thank you. Absolutely. The thumbs up. Oh, I haven't got the die. It must have come out on the um, on the, on the plate. That's really kind of you, Shaz. Thank you. Absolutely. Th likes and shares and thumbs up really do help. 
Um, they help the videos get seen, which is amazing. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate Yes. And subscribe to the page so you never miss one. And if you hit the notification bell as well, then apparently that helps. So that can be really useful to kind of get. And then when I go live and I actually plan it ahead of time and uh, you actually get a notification, which can be quite handy. So I brought in Lost Lagoon because I thought that would work really nicely with this. And that's what I'm going to stamp the leaves in. So I love the leaves in this one. And these are just, these are not watercolored. These are just going straight. So I'm going to stamp two of the, oh, what's my... I haven't unpacked from class yet, so everything's kind of everywhere still. So I'm going to stamp two of those, three, I call that the three leaf, and I'm going to stamp one of the two leaf, all in Lost Lagoon. Used in the, uh, the well, what have I missed? What have I missed? Are they back in stock now? What, the Deckle Turkles? Hopefully they are. I'm not sure, Jackie. What 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 was out of stock? Uh, use them at the team weekend. Use them at the weekend. Ah, oh, yes, you had your retreat at the weekend, which sounded sounded amazing. And there are dies for this, but I'm going to fussy cut them because I find it relaxing and it means I can watch the comments and chat. And apparently, I've been told people find it relaxing watching other people fussy cut not stress inducing which is what i thought it would be no i i, I, I like i quite like watching other people cut as well the stamping up paper snips just make it so easy i've um quite a lot of my customers even those who don't buy i say called customers class ladies even those who don't buy um products so many have bought snips because it just makes everything so much easier. And people for years who have struggled to fussy cut, as soon as you put a pair of these in their hand, they're like, ah, so it wasn't me. It was the tools I was using. So <laughs> when you cut a leaf off by accident, I'll never forget, I was doing a class during COVID um, online because we all went online and it was send the packs out. And of course, you can't send stamped images. So I punched some daisies and I put the daisies in. And one of the things that we were doing was pulling the petals to put some texture into them. And um, I'll never forget um, over Facebook, I think, because I wasn't really technical at that time. I didn't have Zoom. And um, one of my ladies just typed, Oh my goodness, I've pulled a petal off. Um, and I just everybody was like, that's so funny. Maybe you had to be there, but um, yeah, it was it was funny. I could just imagine they're sat there now with, with a petalless daisy like you used to have when you were kids and you pulled the petals off. Yes, they're honestly Mary, they make such a difference as they use Shaz loves her Shaz loves watching her scan and cut machine. <laughs> scan and cut machine cut. Yes, that is quite fun watching someone else do the cutting and again with these just like I was saying with the daisies you're just going to push a little bit of texture into it just by kind of ruching that up and that really helps to bring it all to life so that's our leaves and our vellum leaves put those to one side and we're going to do a little bit of water coloring here's where the fun happens so let's bring in our cardstock this is watercolour cardstock, and I'm going to use some white heat embossing powder. And I am just going to grab my embossing buddy because I might not have very, um, I've got a bit of oily fingers maybe, so. We are just going to put the embossing buddy over there, and it means that the powder is not going to stick where we don't want it. Okay, then we can grab some Versamark ink. Versamark, and the only block that I have at the moment, so this is being reused, everything else I took to class. <laughs> oh, I have got another one, there's another one up there. And we're going to grab both the big flower and the little flower. And we're gonna stamp one big flower 
and two little flowers. Now I've got the lights on so I can see what I'm stamping. But if you struggle, which you probably will with Versamark, um, if you struggle to see where you've stamped, just add powder to each of them one at a time. And there's nothing worse than stamping over, <clears throat> excuse me, stamping over something you've stamped because you couldn't see. But I have got the lights on so I can see today. Chop that down and then we can pop that. You cut your husband's hair with snips. Love that. My other half hasn't actually got any hair. Um, so, but I don't think he'd let me cut it even if he did. This looks so pretty. I emptied a new pot of embossing powder in here recently and it's now so white and crisp, whereas before it had all bits in because I dropped it on the floor and then tried to pick it all up. True crafter never throws anything away. Although I do have to sometimes. And then we can heat emboss those three images. So just in white, just looked up what deckled means. Oh, go on then, Mary, enlighten us. Is it, is it like, what does deckled? I mean, I know what the deckled dies are. Oops. And I've just unplugged my light. I'll plug it back in in a minute. Okay, let's plug my light back in. It's all blind, gosh, it's blinding until it settles down. Right, there we go. Now, I don't actually have any water, so we might have to improvise. May have to improvise. Let's put some water on here. And then, because I don't need much, I don't need much at all. And then let's grab, we're going to use Gorgeous Grape and Fresh Freezer. The best colours in the world. To do with paper making, the edge created by the frame used in handmade, oh, there you go. Yes, handmade paper has got a deckled edge. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, by the frame when you paper when you had make paper. I had a go at that in um, Italy. It was amazing. We went to Italy on holiday, and um, I had a go at making handmade paper. Wonderful, wonderful. So this is um, got green on it, so that's not helpful. Where's my? Let's just get rid of some of that. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to wet the whole thing. This is wet in wet technique. Um, I'm going to wet the whole thing and I'm going to go in with fresh freezer all over. It's really quite wet this, so I'll just let that dry a little bit while I go in and paint this one. Some water painters give out much more water than others, so it's kit kind of learning your, it can be easier to um, just paint with a paintbrush. Some people, when they first start, because controlling the flow of water that's kind of uncontrollable, uncontrollable can be a bit of a challenge. And then we're going to grab, so it's a really kind of pale um, purple at this point. 
And then I'm just going to grab some of this darker purple, which always looks blue on my camera for some reason. And I'm going to go right in the middle of this flower here. And then right at the base. Can you see how that's just wicking away? I'm just using, letting the water do its thing. Gorgeous. And it really brings out that detail in the white. Heat embossing. With the dark purple, you can really see those lines. And this one is now kind of drier, which is good. You don't want it too wet, otherwise it just, the water runs everywhere. And that's not entirely what we want. Just that really nice center. And you can go in and play with it as much or little as you want. You can even go in and add some darker as it starts to dry. You get a bit more control. It doesn't fluid out and dilute the. So you can go back in and add some darker areas if you want to. Once it starts to dry. Beautiful. I didn't need that water after all. Okay. So ideally I should have done those at the beginning because now they're wet and they need to dry. Um, so let's use the heat tool to dry those off, I think. I'll try not to unplug my um, light this time. The Stampin' Up! heat tool has two heat settings. It's got a zero, which is off, and then a one and a two. So if you put it onto the one um, to begin with, it doesn't push the water away. I always use two for heat embossing because it needs a higher heat. Um, but for drying things that are just damp, you can get away with the heat setting one. That's probably enough. Yeah. Look at those gorgeous flowers. And then, again, there's dyes, but we can just fussy cut these. So, shall I go full on Christmas for next week? What do we reckon? Full on Christmas, or shall I? I've just, or actually, I've just placed an order today, and... Um, I purchased from the clearance rack, which is something I don't usually do. And it's last year's, do you remember the pumpkin, the Hello, is it Hello Harvest? With the pumpkin and the flowers, which I never got um, because I thought that might be quite nice for, for fall. And it was only six pounds for the stamp set. Six quid, it was a bargain. So yeah. Even though it's kind of retired, I thought, actually, whilst it's on the clearance rack, and some of you guys might be interested in that as well. Oh, don't they? They look lovely. Yes, yeah, honestly, you can't go wrong for £6. I had some stamping rewards, um, and, um, yeah, I thought, oh, I'm going to treat myself to something I don't normally do. I used to, I used to all the time, but now I demonstrate more. I don't normally buy retired things um, because you can't really, we can't sell them. And so I don't tend to use them. Not that I, not that I craft to sell, but you guys want to, you know, if you see something and you think, oh, I want to make that and you can't buy it anymore, then it's a bit of a shame. So I do tend to stick to kind of newer products now, whereas I used to get all the retired stuff because it is a bargain. So, yeah. I thought I'd get that and show you. So maybe we'll use that next week. See how I'm feeling. I might make something with that one. So with these flowers, I'm just giving these a bit of height as well. Okay, just going to force those up into that kind of flower shape. And then we can start to assemble this onto the decorative circle and then onto the cardstock. So the first thing I might put is the deckled circle down. I'm gonna use dimensionals for that one. A 
I don't want to jinx it, but it doesn't look like Ross is doing any work today. So hopefully our internet's gonna, I'm not going to cut it out. So just five dimensionals there. And that's just going to go kind of bottom left corner, something like that. And then each of these is going to go on dimensionals as well. I normally only use one, I will, I will say. On this big one, you could probably put two. And then that can go off to the side here. Now, I wondered whether the colours for this card were inspired. I've been collecting lavender this week. I thought but I got it. I got it cut before the rain came and it went soggy and nasty. And um, I'm going to try and use it to make some dried lavender bags with. And um, so it's safely in a in a carrier, uh, not carrier bag, in a brown bag at the moment uh, in my porch, smelling beautiful. But I just wondered whether the colours were inspired by the um, by the lavender with this kind of lost lagoon leaves so we're just going to pop those down there because it's a very lavendery color and then again with these just popping a tiny bit of glue on the base of it you could use glue dots as well with this if you wanted to um, and that's just going to tuck underneath here and now you can't really see the leaf but it just adds some dimension to the card. It's getting these leaves so you can't see the base of them but yet you kind of see all of the leaf. And then that one can tuck underneath there like that. And then all this card needs is a sentiment and some gems. So um, for the sentiment, I knew which sentiment I wanted to use, um, but I didn't seem to have a die that fit it. So I'm going to show you a bit of a technique, a bit of a trick, using the Stylish Shapes dies. And this one here. And a stamp set, which I just need to find. I think I used it today, actually. This one has got some gorgeous sentiments in it. I've used this one an awful lot. And you've got For a Fabulous Friend. So it's a really long die, which I thought would work perfectly along this card. And I wanted to have it in this die here. So you've probably, some of you have probably seen this, but some of you might not have seen this little trick. So we're gonna grab some white cardstock, the length of, so I'm just risking, it's not, risking it not being quite long enough. So let's grab a scrap, that's better. And we can stamp the, and a spare block we can stamp that now with these long ones as well they can get bent out of shape so i just tend to kind of make sure they're they're straight first use the grid paper or just make sure by eye leave it to flop and then pop that on there and then use your ink I'm going for gorgeous grape and then that can stamp down Kind of in the middle, give yourself plenty of room. Then grab your cut and emboss machine. I am just going to clean it off. The mess. And what you're going to do, line your plate up. Two ways to do this. You can either be really careful about where you cut as in roll it to, or just make sure, can you see it, that the end 
where it's got the banner cut is off the edge of the plate. Okay, so we've got this lined up here. Make sure it's straight top and bottom. And then make sure the edge of the die is off the plate. And that means that when you put it through, lining your plate up here, it won't cut that end section. Okay. Just going to make sure that's lined up. It doesn't help that my plate is ridiculously bowed. So hopefully if you've got flat, plate, flat plates, this will be a bit easier for you. And you could use tape as well. I'm For some reason, I always seem to be opposed to using tape, which is ridiculous. Okay, so that's part one. So you should end up with that. Okay, so you've got a partial die cut. It's only die cut half the way through. And then we can line it up. And this time you want to line it up at this end. Make sure that it's in the grooves so you're cutting straight so that the cut line is back in the grooves. Line up with that with there and then run it through this way around so that the end doesn't cut Oh, Mary, you're going to love this if you've not seen it before. I am just going to use a bit of tape because I've got it. I might as well use it. So let's line that back up again because it's slipped, you see, because I was being silly and not using the tape. So make sure it's in the grooves and lined up at the end. And then we can just add a bit of tape. This tape is wonderful. It doesn't rip the cardstock at all and then we can line that up so that it doesn't cut the end pop that on there And then when you take this tape off and take your die off, you've cut out your sentiment long. Yeah, I love that. And it just it extends. You could do that like any kind of length that you want to. I don't know. You can even go like you could even go really long, but you'd have to be careful that you didn't cut either end. You, yeah, I don't know. I don't actually know how you do that. But yes, you can extend the, long, the length of your die cuts, which I think is fab. Oh, Mary, it's been like a school night for you. Bless you. I love that. And then that's just going to go and sit on there. So to, to do this, because we put this one on dimensionals and this one on dimensionals, we are going to need to triple dimensional our banner. So let's grab. And what I mean by that is right on the end so the fabulous friend with a d we're going to put one two three so this is not a card for going in the mail and then another one here i go one two this would be a large letter and three you could post you could absolutely post it but you just need to be mindful and then i'm going to go one there and one there. So three, three, one, one. And then that should just sit over the top of our flowers. It'd be easier if I laid it flat like this. Very fabulous friend. There we go. I think that's straight. And then we can, so it kind of reminds me, don't take this the wrong way, anybody, but it kind of take, reminds me of an old lady's card, this one. Um, I think it's the colours. That, I think it's that lavender that does it. And I'm just going to use some gems. Got these gorgeous freesia. Ah, uh, thank you. Gorgeous fresh freesia gems it is <laughs> what 
What, a school night or an old lady's card? I can't tell what, what you're talking about there, Mary. Okay, so this is going to go, we're going to put one down here somewhere and then use a big one. Probably just there and another little one up there. A few little gems. Ah, oh, bless you. Thank you, Shaz. Thank you, everybody. I just honestly, I don't know how people manage to make multiple cards in their lives. That's an hours, hours long card again, but I hope you liked it. It's a fun fold, so you could do that with anything. You could do that fold with any kind of decoration and just decorate that middle panel. Great way to use up the designer series paper and uh, a little bit special for your recipient. A little bit different, which I think is quite fun. Yeah, that's it. That's all from me for tonight. Um, I should be back next week. I'm on the day shift, so I'm going to need to get prepped this week. Um, but yeah, I should be back next Thursday. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Please don't forget to like, if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell and you'll be reminded of new videos. Um, and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like it. And if you fancy purchasing anything that you've seen in this video or others, you can find a link to my store, which is down below. And there's an amazing join offer at the moment as well. So if you're kind of thinking, oh, I'd like to get a few bits or you'd like a, a crafty family um, and you'd like, like the kind of social element of it as well. There's a really great offer on at the moment, which is uh, until the end of this month, I think. Yeah, end of this month. And um, you can either save 35% on a starter kit, which makes you down to £65 and you get £130 worth of product. Or you can get 35% more. So it costs you £99 for £175.50, I think it is. So, Oh, what tape did I use? The tape is this one. And I got it online and I honestly don't know where because my friend bought it for me. Um, but it's a very, very low tack tape, really low tack. Like I've used Scotch Magic tape before and even that risks ripping it. But this is so low tack that it holds it in place and it reuses as well. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't rip. And this is just grid paper that's going on. To. It's not even cardstock. Yeah. Old lady. <laughs> I felt laid at the old lady's card. Soft and gentle colours. You're welcome. Thank you for your company too. Massively appreciate you all popping on. Honestly, wouldn't be able to do these videos if you weren't watching because it would be just so demoralising. So it's lovely to have you join me. Um, I'll be back next week. And uh, apart from masculine cards, if anybody's got anything they'd like me to demonstrate, give me a shout and uh, I'll do my best. But hopefully I'll be able to get some masculine cards your way at some point. Okie dokie. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you all again really, really soon. Uh, thank you, everybody. See you later. Bye for now. Bye, guys.